Hey guys, Suze here, back with another Keto Dinner Recipes Low Carb Meals video. If you're new here, we make these videos every single week to give you a little inspiration to get in the kitchen and get your keto meal prep on. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and join our crew. We would love to have you. Let's get into the video. First up, we made this one pan garlic herb chicken and asparagus, so easy and delicious. So to start with, I took two chicken breasts. These are a pound plus each. I put them in a storage bag just on an old bar towel and I'm using this meat tenderizer pounder. I will link this in my Amazon store to tenderize it and basically just trying to get the chicken all to like the same thickness so that it cooks evenly and quickly. After I've got that all pounded out, moving it to the side and I'm just showing you here, I have a pound of fresh asparagus. I just pulled the nubby ends off and washed it. Now now taking our chicken breasts out of the bag, I did cut each of them in half and I am sprinkling both sides of them with salt and pepper. Now to a cast iron skillet that you can see is well oiled on medium heat, I'm adding two tablespoons of butter and while that's melting, I'm adding a half a teaspoon of basil, a half a teaspoon of oregano, half a teaspoon thyme, half a teaspoon onion powder and just using my fork to whisk that all around in the butter and let that finish melting all of the way. Now to that I'm adding one tablespoon of minced garlic and I'm also going to kind of fork whisk that in and let it cook for another minute till it's nice and fragrant. And now I'm just gonna add my chicken breast to the pan and I am going to cook them on this side for about seven minutes. And then flipping them over, you can see how the chicken just picked up all of those herbs and garlic and it's such a beautiful crust on it. I'm just flipping these over and I'm gonna cook the other side for seven minutes as well. And when that's done, I did flip it back over to the original side and then I'm just going to make some room in my pan and kind of put all of my chicken over to the edges so that we can cook our asparagus. So taking the last tablespoon of butter, I'm just plopping that in the middle of the pan and then I'm gonna stick this asparagus right on top of it. Now don't worry that not all of the asparagus is touching the bottom of your pan. We're gonna spread it out and let the steam from the pan finish cooking the asparagus and the chicken. Adding some sea salt and ground black pepper to our asparagus and then I'm just gonna use tongs to kind of toss this around so that each piece of asparagus eventually gets coated in some of that butter. And I'm just gonna keep kind of tossing it while it cooks for another seven to 10 minutes until it's all nice and tender, but not overly cooked. And then here it is all plated up. This is super easy, quick, simple, and the asparagus tastes delicious this way. It's just the right amount of firmness to it. The chicken stays nice and moist and is nice and flavorful. Next up, this is a recipe I've been wanting to try for a while. It is by Rule Demi. I'll link the original down below. This is called Not Your Caveman's Chili. And to make this, I have my kitchen scale out and I am taking some beef that's already kind of cut up for stew and I'm measuring out two pounds of it. Then I'm getting my food processor bowl and I've just got a regular chopper blade in the bottom of it and I'm taking out one pound and putting it over there. Sticking that to the side for now, I'm going to take this pound and I'm just going to cube it up into really small pieces. And to just kind of show you an example of how small I'm cutting these and I'm going to do this whole pound of beef this way. Sticking it to the side in my food processor, I'm taking the other pound of beef and I'm just going to pulse this repeatedly until this is all ground up and the consistency of just regular ground beef. Look at that. This would make an awesome cheesesteak, <laughs> just saying. And to go ahead and prep, I'm also pulling out my really big crock pot because we're gonna finish the chili in that. So over on the stove top, I'm taking a large skillet and I'm just pouring in all of those queued up stewed beef chunks and we're just going to brown these over medium high heat and just stirring those around until they're almost fully cooked. And we're gonna remove them with a slotted spoon into the bottom of our crock pot, leaving the fat in the pan. Now we're gonna add that ground beef to the pan as well and I have ground it up so well I don't even need my meat chopper upper I can just do it with this spoon and we're gonna brown it as well and remove it also to the crock pot with our spoon leaving the excess fat in the skillet now to that I'm adding one cup of onion they use a whole onion I just used one cup of chopped onion to make it easier to measure the carbs to that I'm also adding about a cup of diced green bell pepper and I did just use a whole medium bell pepper for that. So it might be a little bit more than a cup. And we're just gonna stir these around and let them cook on medium until our onions become a little bit more translucent and the veggies soak up all of that fat. Now while that's cooking, I'm going to make the sauce for our chili. So leaving that on the stove top, I'm going and getting a medium sized bowl. And to that, I am adding one cup of beef broth. I use low sodium because that makes it just easier to measure your salt later on. A third of a cup tomato paste, two tablespoons of soy sauce, and I use low sodium soy sauce as well, two tablespoons of olive oil, two tablespoons of chili powder, like the chili con carne powder, 
a teaspoon and a half of cumin, two teaspoons of fish sauce. Make sure you use fish sauce that's zero carbs or less than one carb per serving. Two teaspoons of minced garlic, two teaspoons of paprika, a teaspoon of oregano, a whole teaspoon of ground cayenne pepper, one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, a teaspoon of ground black pepper, and a teaspoon of sea salt, and that's what makes it important to use low sodium broth. And then I'm just gonna get my whisk and mix this all together until everything is well incorporated and we have a nice sauce for our chili. Now moving over to our crock pot, you can see we've got the ground beef and then on top of the stew beef chunks. And now I'm just spooning all of those cooked peppers and onions right on top of that as well. And then to that, we're just gonna pour that sauce straight over it. And then we're just gonna go ahead and mix this all together really, really well. Now the original recipe says to simmer it for two and a half hours on high in the slow cooker, and then to take the lid off and simmer it for like another half hour without the top. I just went ahead and put the lid on mine and cooked it on high for about three hours. And I did make sure to stir it periodically because anytime I'm cooking with like a sauce like this in my crock pot, if you don't stir it up enough, it tends to get a little crusty on the edges and I didn't want that. Here it is all plated up. I just topped it with a tiny bit of parsley just for a pop of color. The original recipe also says that if you want a more liquidy chili that you can add some coffee to it. So if any of you make it and you do yours that way, let me know how that turns out because I'm very curious about that. Um, I served mine just like this to start with and leftovers we did a little sour cream and cheese on it and oh my gosh this was worth the trouble of grinding that meat up so freaking delicious next up a simple meal i just made for myself this evening was some parmesan baked cod with a little bit of roasted broccoli so to start with i take a small baking sheet non-stick foil on it spray it with a little olive oil cooking spray i'm taking about five to six ounces of frozen broccoli that i thawed and i'm just sticking that around my eight ounce cod filet that i thawed out now on the stove top, I melted a tablespoon of butter and I'm just drizzling that over my cod and I'm also gonna drizzle it over the broccoli. And just rubbing that in. And the recipe that um, inspired this that I'll link down below, they made, I think, three cod fillets for theirs. And so I kind of changed up my process for it, but just keeping it really simple. I salted and peppered both sides of my filet of fish as well as my broccoli. Then I just took a little bit of paprika and sprinkled it on both sides and I just kind of rubbed that into my fish and just dumped any of the excess over onto some of my broccoli. Now I'm sprinkling that as well as the broccoli with a little garlic powder. And then I chopped up uh, maybe a half a tablespoon of Italian parsley, and I'm just kind of spreading that onto my fish as well. And then I'm sprinkling it with a little grated Parmesan cheese. Just straight out of the container, and I'm also gonna sprinkle this Parmesan cheese onto my broccoli. And I'm just patting that in to make it almost like a crust. And then I'm popping this whole thing into a 400 degree oven for 15 minutes. Here's what it looks like when it comes out. You can easily double, triple, quadruple, what have you, this recipe if you're making it for a crowd. Here it is plated up. This was absolutely delicious. The broccoli was just the right texture. You might would have to cook it longer if you tried to cook frozen broccoli, but just cooking it from thawed, it was perfect. Last up this week, I had a special request for some keto salads, keto inspired salads. So this is a chicken spinach blueberry salad. I'm just using some pre-cooked grilled chicken strips. I buy these in two pound packs at Costco and this is a whole pound. We're just gonna use half of this for two salads, but I'm gonna go ahead and heat all of it up. And to do that, I'm just plopping it all into a saute pan over medium heat. I'm gonna just let that heat while I get our veggies prepped. Over to the side, I'm taking a medium dish and we're gonna make a dressing. And this is balsamic. And some people are totally anti-balsamic vinegar on keto. So if you are one of those people, leave it out. It is three grams of carbs per tablespoon and we're adding a tablespoon of that to the dish as well as the quarter of a cup of olive oil. And to that, we're also adding a tablespoon of red wine vinegar. If you wanted to leave the balsamic out, you could just double the red wine, which has zero carbs. To that, I also added a tablespoon of water. I'm adding two teaspoons of minced red onion that I just did in a little mini chopper. 
a half of a teaspoon Dijon mustard, a half of a teaspoon granulated swerve, an eighth of a teaspoon ground thyme, and just a little bit of salt and pepper. And then I am just whisking this together. Now the original recipe from Low Carb Maven, she actually runs this dressing through a processor and you know, really mixes it very well, but I found that doing it with the whisk worked just fine and I didn't have to dirty an extra kitchen appliance to do it. Now taking two salad bowls, for this recipe, she recommends using six cups of baby spinach. I did not use quite that much, but I just divided probably a cup and a half of baby spinach into each dish. And then I'm going to top each of those with about the equivalent of one chicken breast. And then you want two slices of paper thin red onion. I didn't slice mine quite that thin, so I'm taking some of it out and just putting a couple red onion ringlets on there, but you do what you need to do for your macros because we all know onions are something else you have to watch. And we're also adding blueberries, which I never hardly eat berries on keto, but this was such a special treat. I'm adding an ounce of fresh blueberries to each salad. And this was like dinner and dessert in one. So freaking delicious. Like the longer I'm following a keto diet, Diet, the more delicious it is to eat fruit or vegetables that are technically fruits like tomato. Now I'm just topping that with our vinaigrette, even like splitting it and then a little bit of shredded Parmesan cheese and a little bit of slivered almonds on top. And you could toast those if you wanted to get fancy, but I was trying to make this as quick and easy as possible. But do what you need to do for your macros. This was absolutely delicious and was more of a treat and was still, I think, only like six net carbs for the salad about so not too bad there you go guys that's this week's keto dinner recipes low carb meal ideas i hope you enjoyed this video if you did make sure you share it out with your friends pin it like it comment with any recipe suggestions or, th or other types of videos that you would like to see from us as well and until next time bye guys